Hello and welcome to our home service of the Word and Prayer from Village Lutheran Church. Welcome as we gather together even while apart. I'd like to share some announcements at the start of our service. Easter is on the way and you can order Easter flowers for our in-person service at Village Lutheran Church. Lilies and tulips are $20 each and the deadline to order is coming soon next Sunday, March 21st. We have an Easter egg hunt each year at Village Lutheran Church and have had to make it a little different because of the pandemic. We have an Easter drive through for kids this year coming up on Saturday, March 27th from 11 until 12 noon. Frank Rendo is a good friend of our congregation, a Christian singer. He's going to be singing at the church on Palm Sunday afternoon, Sunday, March 28th at 2 p.m. You must reserve your tickets in advance so that you can be a part of that socially distanced concert here at Village Lutheran Church. If you'd like more information about these or any of the other important events at our church and school community, you can always give us a call, 914-337-0207, extension 1003, or you can email us at vlcmail, that's M-A-I-L, at vlc-ny.org, vlcmail at vlc-ny.org. And speaking of our website, if you'd like more information about any of our programs and services, just go online, vlc-ny.org. You can also learn how to support our ministry. There's more information about online giving, sending in a check or a donation, or even text to give. Welcome to our service during this season of Lent. We begin with the prelude. our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. God of grace, by sending us your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Grant that we may always recognize your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your blessings, and cheerfully serve you and one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our service continues as we focus on the reading of God's Holy Word. The Old Testament reading is from Numbers chapter 21. From Mount Hor, Moses and the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. 
So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 2. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We prepare our hearts for the gospel with the words of the verse. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that they may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We sing our hymn of the day together, Christ the life of all the living.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. I'm getting impatient. It's been a year now since the start of the pandemic, and I'm weary. I'm tired of this. I'm ready to return to some kind of normal. Now we see signs of hope, right? Vaccines in arms. We look at hospital rates that are lowered. However, we've seen hopeful signs before and we're impatient. We're ready for this to be done. We are so over it. The people in our Old Testament reading were also impatient. I'd like to look at it for today. It's from the book of Numbers, chapter 21. Jesus actually references this story in the gospel reading for today as well. Now, as I said, it's from the Old Testament. It's part of the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, very special uh, to all of God's people and especially to the Jewish people even today. We call them the books of Moses or the Pentateuch or the books of law. And the book of Numbers is unique in the Torah in that it's the results of a census, two of them actually. So there's lots of lists of things and lots of numbers, which is why we call it the book of Numbers. We also have stories in the book of Numbers that are not in any other book of the Bible, and our story for today is just such an example, Numbers chapter 21. So let's look at it, uh, starting at verse 4. From Mount Hor, Moses and the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. They became impatient, and they had every right to be impatient. You know the story. God's people had been enslaved in Egypt under the Pharaoh, and they had cried out for mercy and help, and God had sent Moses to the Pharaoh to tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. Now it took 10 mighty plagues, but finally they were released and they went through the Red Sea on dry ground and began their journey to the promised land, the land of Canaan. That journey should have taken about 40 days, no more, but it took almost 40 years. And if we understand correctly, our story for today would have taken place about year 36. Imagine how impatient you would be if you wandered in the wilderness for 36 years in what should have taken 40 days. They were done, they were over it. It's understandable. They also, however, were not just patient, they gave up on Moses and they gave up on God. So looking at verse five, the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable people. How sad this is. God had been a deliverer for the people through Moses. God loved them. They were his chosen people. And yet in their impatience, because they were so weary, they thought God hated them. They didn't know that God loved them, and they couldn't put their trust and faith in God. That's always a danger of impatience. We can grow so weary that we lose our faith and we lose our hope. And that's what the story tells us God wants us to return to. Now it's a quirky little story. It reads a little like a Grimm's fairy tale. And I can't explain the story adequately, but I will tell you the heart of the story is that God wants his people to turn once again to him. So here's the story. This is verse six. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Well, it's a quirky little story, but God got their attention through the serpents and gave them the ability to turn once again to Moses and to God and to put their faith in him. In fact, Jesus references this story to say that the cross is like this. When he is lifted up on the cross, people look at it and live. 
So I don't know how you're feeling today. Maybe you are impatient. Maybe it's hard for you to trust in God because you just don't feel his love. Well, the Lord's not going to send snakes among us, but the Lord does want us to get uh, our attention. And so he sends the Holy Spirit through his word. And today he calls out to you and he says, turn once again to me. You may be impatient. You may be tired and weary. You may be lonely or sad. You may have needs that make life difficult and a burden. Turn once again to God, Jesus who loves you, Jesus who rescues you through his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus who has power to help you through the most difficult circumstances. May God grant it to you for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let us confess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, you love the world by giving your only Son, that whoever believes in him might be saved. Bless the work of your Church and all who are called to share the Gospel. By your Spirit, create and sustain saving faith within us and all who hear your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, in these Lenten days, we pray that you would draw us into your light. Expose what we have thought, spoken, or done against you, that we might look to your Son lifted up on the cross and find life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Set your Spirit at work within us that we may resist what is evil and carry out the good works you desire us to do. We pray especially for our Lenten mission projects and our ongoing social ministries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and sustain all who serve in government, that they may act wisely and in accordance with your will. Support those who defend, protect, and attend to our needs while we continue to navigate through this pandemic, especially first responders, medical professionals, and funeral home personnel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are our light and our salvation. Hide in the shelter of your wings any who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. Keep them from fear and uphold them with the healing power of Christ. We pray especially for all on our prayer lines and those we remember before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your steadfast love endures forever. We give you thanks for our community of faith, for the believers of every generation, and especially for the family and friends dear to us. Keep us in your faith and favor that we may abide in your eternal peace now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Our closing hymn is, By Grace I'm Saved, We Sing Together. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.